Welcome back, folks, to a, another episode. We are starting the day off where we're at the house. Uh, we are planning on doing a little bit of duck hunting tomorrow morning. I'm with Pool Jet. He's, uh, I think he's, he might be getting naked. I'm not sure what's going on over there, to be honest with you. But we are going to be doing a little bit of duck hunting tomorrow. Um, but we got to do some preparation, some uh, gearing up, getting ready. But before today's video gets started, I want to let you guys know that we got a bunch of new ducks merch, and it will be linked down below if you guys want to go check it out. Everything from duck calls to dope hats, hoodies, warm gear, stuff to keep you warm in the winter, stuff to get the ducks to come in, the geese to come in, everything for waterfowl. All of your waterfowl hunting needs. Cool jet. Shoo. All of your, even that hat. Look at even that hat. That's hat. a nice hat. I like that hat. You, All you of can even get that hat. You can, I know. That's why I said this is a neat, oh, that's a this nice is a hat. Nice hat. Neat hat. Nice hat. Uh, this is a neat hat. But uh, it will be linked down below if you guys want to go check it out and you can get 10% off your entire purchase by using promo code flare So all duck stuff and I'm giving away the tank I know I've talked about it many many times but in case you guys are new the tank the eight-wheeled amphibious floating Vehicle that I've been using on the farm and everything for the last like, couple years We're giving it away things worth over twenty thousand dollars and you can win it All you gotta do is sign up for the duck shirt of the month and that will also be linked down below It's on the website every month that you're signed up is an additional entry, but what are we doing today? We're doing something. Oh, okay Okay. Well, thanks for filling in the, the viewers here. <laughs> but just like, I don't know. You just told me to show up. I don't know what's going on right now. But we want to go duck hunting. So I was talking to Pooja. I'm like, Pooja, what are we going to do? We, I don't want to just go out there and, and just duck hunt to duck hunt. Like, we got to have like a challenge involved and something like that. But um, what are we going to do? So my thought was to do a mini shotgun challenge where we take the world's smallest shotgun. We bought it at uh, an, a, a gun auction, I don't know, a few months ago. And uh, look at this thing. Look at this guy. That's the old Pew Pew 3000s. That's a, that's a, it's a 20, was it a 20 inch barrel? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it was a 20. Yeah, it was 20, like 20 inch. 20 and a quarter. Yeah, 20 and a quarter. Look at that tiny, that thing. But that's a 12 gauge. It can shoot a three inch shell. Like, Your shoulder's I have, gonna be bad. Oh, my shoulder's toast. I already know. We have a bad shoulder. We, we, yeah, I, I, I only have one good shoulder, so I'm about to have no good shoulders after this video. But uh, I mean, look at, look at that thing. Look how tiny that is. You can literally just like, Put it in your pocket. You put it in your. You can literally put I it in your. Probably wouldn't do that. Right? Yeah. Don't, you know. Probably don't put that in your pocket. We have shot it before. I remember it's loud and there's a lot of recoil. Um, but I figured it'd be a challenge. It's a single shot, three inch, twelve gauge. I have twelve gauges that are full size that don't even shoot three inch. They shoot like two and three quarters. I don't know how somebody got away with making a three inch shell shooting shotgun that's that small and it's a twelve gauge. Like that's. When's the last time you cleaned this thing? Uh, no, that has never been cleaned. What's that look like? It's a little dirty, but it's fine. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've seen worse. It, yeah, it could be worse. I mean, it'll, it'll but probably fire. But it's this little hammer, you draw it back, single fire action. So, anyways, that's going to be the challenge um, for today's episode. That is the plan. But before we kind of get into it and get, get all jazzed up about, really, what if that would have just... That would have been impressive. That would have been cool. With nothing. Anyways, uh, what was I saying? So the plan for today before we go hunting is we need to prepare to shoot this thing. Meaning, I got to see how accurate this thing is. I got to see how tight of a pattern it keeps. So essentially, we're going to do a little bit of target practice. And uh, getting me and every, like, I mean, Pool Jet, you shoot it too. Maybe, maybe, maybe if I shoot a limit quick tomorrow, you can, you can shoot too. And we can, we get a two man. Uh, depending on how it goes. We are not going to be shooting the duck loads though. So like the duck loads we're going to be shooting is three inch threes, which I know is a little large for, especially since there's probably still teal flying. But the only shells that I have laying around that's why we're gonna take but we do have two and three quarter trap load uh target loads with some clay pitch so we are going to be doing some practicing getting geared up getting our accuracy uh dialed in essentially to go out that way when we go out tomorrow we are just we are on our a game we are ready to go that's the best thing you can do before you go duck hunting practice shooting throw some clays up there get dialed in and ready to rock and roll so with that being said you guys stay tuned here we go, folks. This is the shell we're going to be using right there. This is a, a 1,200 FPS target mat, one ounce or something. But you guys, some of you guys may be wondering, Flair, I thought you had uh, COVID. Why are you hanging out with Pool Jet? I am not infected anymore, not contagious anymore. Um, So it has been the full quarantine period. Oh, God, there's a dog right there. I don't know why she just scared me. Hey, Rick, you want to go hunting with us? I was hoping you guys would stay in the back because, well, Lucy doesn't mind the pew-pew shots, but Millie seems to get a little bit nervous. Oh, and so, oh. really? Rick? Are you out of your mind? Anyways, uh, what I was saying is I went through the whole quarantine period. I haven't had symptoms for seven days. I only lost my sense of taste and smell. Hey, do quit eating the shell. Rick, hey, 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 no. I'm trying to give him a, a serious speech. All right. I only lost my sense of taste and smell for three to four days. I can't remember the total amount of it, but I have had no symptoms for seven days and I've got tested two times and both times came back negative. So we've gone through the whole quarantine period, tested negative two times and have no symptoms to reek. That is why pool jet is here. Okay. I want to clear that up before I get anybody out here saying that we're being reckless. Okay. We're not being reckless. Pool jet. 
I'm sick. You shouldn't get it. I mean, at least not from me at this point. Because I tested negative. As long as we, we, I have we no start symptoms. Making out, I think we'll be good. As long as you don't make out. She's eating that whole package. Why don't she do that? As long as you aren't making out, and I'll start sneezing and coughing on you. But I should be okay. I mean, literally took two tests, two separate tests. So if it, two tests come back negative, and I have no symptoms for a week, and I went through the whole duration of quarantine, I should be okay. So I decided to address that for you guys. But I guess we're going to get started with these dogs. And if Lucy uh, wants to partake, we can't take you tomorrow, though, buddy. So we're taking the, the little boat, the old little mini boat that you've seen us use. Or I guess it was just me. Well, you and I went, but it didn't go that great because I got a new motor. So I went, I used, I, I got a new motor. With new motor. Yeah, with the new motor you have, then no. I took it out by myself during quarantine COVID time and uh, used the new motor at work race. We're gonna go um, back and do the same thing. So, anyways, let's see if I can hit a clay target. All right, I'm gonna try throwing it to myself. Hammer back. Here we go. Oh, Lucy! No, Lucy, don't. She's going down there to get the shards. Lucy, we need to shoot like. Kind of loud. Is yeah, my ear. This one's gone. What? Should I try? What if I, I think? I just thought about this. Maybe this is a terrible idea. What if I threw a tennis ball, shot it, she grabs and brings it back, assuming that it doesn't completely ruin the tennis ball? Would that not be good training for her? That'd be kind of cool, yeah. I feel like it would work. Maybe it won't. Where'd that tennis ball? Where'd she put? I it? think she might take it out. She just takes it down there. Lucy went after the uh, clay. She went after the clay, and that just reminded me. What if? What if I threw a target up and shot it, and it kind of projected it, and she went and got it? I think that's about as good as training as you could get as live hunting, Lucy. You wanna do it? You excited? All right, let's find your tennis ball. There we go. Let's try it, let's see if it works. You sit, you gotta sit. You sit, sit, stay. Go get it, fetch it up. She's close. Dead bird, Lucy, dead bird. No, dead bird, Lucy, dead bird. Fetch it up, Lucy, dead bird. She's so close. She needs to go back down a little bit. Dead bird, come on, Lucy, dead bird, go back. Come on, Lucy, go get it. Hey, we should do it in more an open field so she can see it. This is a good idea, but let's execute it better on some less thick grass. I say let's just go in the backyard. We just start doing this. I didn't hit it, by the way. Totally missed it. But this is good for training. Why don't we grab a few clays box and let's go to that the grass and uh, let's try it out in the backyard. All right, so we moved to the backyard so she could find it. Again, I don't think this is like a professional training idea, but I feel, I feel like the idea of her sitting next to me, me shooting, and her retrieving something is pretty close. I mean, obviously she can see me throw it, so it's not as good as, you know, somebody else throwing it out of sight, out of mind. But hey, Lucy, no. Hey, don't break the, you want the ball? Come here. Come here. All right, I'll see if this works. Oh, I hit it. Go get it. Dead bird. Look at that. Dude, it launched it. Look at that. I like this game. Come on, Lucy. Dead bird. Come on. Good girl. Come here. Right here. Come here, Lucy. Hey, come here. Where are you going? Where, what? Come here, why'd you bring it to Millie? Come here, come here. Oh, that's a good dog. You hear it? Dude, that was perfect, because it launched the ball. Look, and it's in perfect condition. I told you, this is, this is a great idea. Did you have fun? Was that fun? Do you want to go hunting? You sit. Look at these dogs. You ever seen any two cuter dogs? Look at these guys. Oh, did you get that fly? Did you get him? That was a good catch. Good job, buddy. All right, well, let's do one more, and then we'll start throwing some clays up to get some more target practice. But, I mean, I feel like it's pretty good practice, too, if you hit this. Having Millie is not a good idea. I just, I feel bad if I go lock Millie up. But this isn't like a super serious training session. If I was really going to work with Lucy, I would lock Millie up. Because that, the main reason why Lucy doesn't bring something back to me is because she is, she's there to torment her and throw her off a little bit. So, let's do another one and see what she does. Sit. Oh, you gotta sit. You gotta sit. Good girl. Dead bird! Dead bird! There she goes. There she found it. Come on, Lucy! Lucy, come! Come! No. Come here. Good girl. That's a good dog. Good girl. Dude, I like this. It's staying perfectly intact. And when I shoot it, it freaking launches it. Lucy, you like this game? I feel like this, this is a decent training game. Well, let's we'll shoot a couple clays, make sure that this thing's spot. I mean, the fact that I'm hitting this, I feel like it's, that's decent. This is probably harder to hit than a clay, but let's get back to the clays for a minute. Back to the clays, we locked the, well, we put the dogs inside the backyard fence just so they wouldn't, you know, start chasing these things. But, let's see if we can make a couple of these guys puff. Oh, baby. All right, pool jet. Oh, God. This thing. Oh, this thing don't really break that easy, but. Pool jets up. So far, I've hit two tennis balls and two clays, so I think I'm doing decent. Let's see how you do. Oh boy, this thing's so tiny. I don't know what to do. You good? 
That's what she said. Yeah, she does. She says it a lot. I hope you're shooting tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, I would. What, what happened there, Jimmy? What? Uh, yeah, it's loud, ain't it? <laughs> you thought it was loud this distance. You can't hear nothing now. Try one more. Sure. You want me to throw? Would it be easier if I threw? You can try. All right, number two. I'll try throwing it. Okay. I mean, you can focus on the bird only. You ready? Sure. All right, here we go. I got nothing. Well, I uh, I don't know what to say about that other than uh, I'll probably be starting the day off shoot. I'll, be, I'll shoot tomorrow. Yeah. How about this? How about this? We'll bring a normal pew, and if you want to shoot, you don't have to use that. You can use normal pew, and I'll use that little guy. That's fair. You like that? Okay, so. That's what we're gonna do. Uh, except we're not bringing Lucy. If you guys thought the shooting tennis ball thing was a good training idea, I don't know. I mean, obviously having Lu or having Millie there is not helpful. But I also thought, like, what if I used this kind of situation with the tennis ball, the shotgun, this yard to train her to to stay, so she doesn't break. So I have you know have her leashed up, just step on it or whatever, have her sit next to me, throw the tennis ball, shoot it. She watches the ball go, and then I say go get it, and that'll teach her not to break. I feel like that's a pretty good training because it's you get the pew sound. You get her visually seeing the object, which would be a duck falling. You get her finding it and bringing it back to me, and you get her to not break. I feel like you get all of the, uh, basically, things that happen while you're hunting to happen without actually having to take her out in the field and hunt. If you guys like that idea, let me know. But I would say I'm decently accurate with it. I will say my ears don't feel the greatest. My shoulder does definitely does not feel the greatest. It's going to be a heck of a challenge. You get single shot. That means groups come in. You're only plucking one of them. You got to reload, break it in half or whatever. So that's pretty much the plan. We will see you guys in the morning. Hopefully we get some ducks down on the ground. Shoo! How's it going, folks? Welcome back. We're at the freaking marsh. Got an hour before shooting light. No one's out here. It's like no one's duck hunting or something. I mean, it helps that it's a weekday. But we've got everything loaded up in the boat. We're going to go ahead and unhook it, get it going, head out to the weast. Go find a nice hole inside of this marsh, and hopefully we get some birds down with the world's small shot. This is a good hole. This is a really good hole. So let's get the decoys out. Well, folks, here we go. This is the old Wham Bam 3000, world's smallest shotgun. I mean, look at it. I don't have a big of a head either. Spreads out. We didn't film much setup. We've got a light, light, light east wind. Um, so we've got one patch there, only teal with a teal spinner. And then we've got gaddies, widgeon, pintails, and mallards over there. Sitting here, kind of a V formation. Hopefully they come right to us, sun at our backs. We're going to get this guy loaded up, and uh, hopefully we can get a few down. You guys stay tuned. Shooting time, boys. <laughs> oh, I got him. I got him. Got him. Dude, I don't know if my shoulder can take this. I'm not gonna lie. Got him. Ah, let's go, son. That's two. Dude, my shoulder is toast. It's so bad. This shot was far. Yeah. The first one, not that bad. This guy was really far. Oh, God, yeah. Phew. Spoonzilla. Let's go, baby. First spoonie. This is the second duck I shot. We still need to go get the first one. The first one, he's over there. Woo. This marsh is sticky, I'm not gonna lie. This gun sucks, but we got two down so far. Look at that beautiful gaddle. That old gaddy hattie. That's a beauty too. Oh, we got two. This marsh sucks, just cause it's sticky, not cause the birds aren't here, they're here. Let's head back to the uh, spread and see if we can get a few more. <laughs> right here, right here, right here. Got him. Woo. All right, <laughs> we got another one. This gun sucks. Every bird, every bird's wounded. They go down, but they don't die. I think it, this, oh, right here. Got him. Let's go, oh, baby. Let's go. That's four. We got the old blue wang. Blue wang teal. How you doing, Rick? All right, let's go grab this other guy. That was a good pass shot there. This guy, I think he died. First one that we haven't had a cripple. Another teal, see? The teal go down. Those big ducks, they struggle. I'm shooting three inch, three shot. My shoulder 
completely dislocated without a doubt but it's what i have to do to get these guys down the ground that's the first dead bird on site we got four we only need two more baby <laughs> I've never had a duck skip like that. That was a fast shot. Dude, that's number five. That was so lucky. I shot it here, pulled the trigger, and it landed 30 yards. It went That was another Telio. Dude, my finger is cut beyond belief. Right there, it's sharp. Look how sharp that edge is. Jesus. So I put my finger on the trigger. Look, oh. cut me open. Dude, that literally took a chunk out of my finger. I was wondering, I'm like, dang, why is my finger hurt so bad? All right, let's grab this bird out, see any more ducks. Oh, we got a green one. Look at that guy, the old green wing, look at him, he's pretty. Pretty little guy. My finger kind of hurts, I'm not even gonna lie. Well, I only need one more and I got my limit. I've got three teal, spoony, and the old gaddy. That's it, that's the old limit, baby. Shoo! We got the limit, boys. I might have to take a nap after this. This is the stickiest freaking mud ever. It's not that deep water, but it's sticky. Well, we got a green wing, lots of greenies. What, one blue, two greens. Look at that guy. That's duck number six for us though. My finger's toast. It doesn't look that bad now that I wash it off. This gun sucks, <laughs> freaking hurts, but that's number six. Let's get a time check. Let's see how quickly we got that done. Shooting time was 6.56 and it is 7.32. So that would be a little over 30 minutes. That's not bad for six birds. So, well, we got our six. You wanna shoot any or you wanna head out? You're wet. I'm, I'm, I got soggy boot and... I gave Pool Jet leaky waders on accident. I told him, I'm like, between these pairs, these are my two newest ones. One of these will leak, one of them will... In my defense, I grabbed the one with the hole. You had a nice hole there. Thinking yeah. it would leak and I was trying to take one for the team a little bit and like give you the non-leaky one. Apparently this hole is not a, it's not a leaky hole. I'm not uh, shin full of water right but, now. It, look, the sun's not even up. This is crazy. But the ducks really kind of slow down after a while. We do have... I wouldn't recommend pull jet you shooting this guy, though, with those... Uh, like, literally, I have blood on the gun right there. Shooting target practice like we did, it did not feel... I mean, it kicked, but it wasn't nearly like this. Like, my shoulder is pretty much out of commission uh, for a while now. But I did bring the big pew, the normal, uh, whatever, 28-inch barrel instead of the uh, 20. And I was going to have pull jet shoot, but he is... Uh, are you up to your knee yet or just shen? In water we're, we're getting close close to, to me yeah. so he's almost knee deep in water because is there where's the hole at in your knee in or, you, knee? or your gooch both no, the old knee really oh yeah so he's got a hole in the knee so we're gonna get out of here it's not really that cold cold but you're probably not comfortable i got a pretty foot yeah yeah he, his yeah. his foot is soggy so well we're gonna pick up the decoys we're gonna head home though we're gonna clean these guys up we're gonna try something that i've i have done haven't done on the channel, haven't done in a while, um, but I'm gonna try a little bit different. We are gonna try to make some jerky. Luckily, we do have some teal. The old spoonie, mm, that's, oh, that's a little dicey. I mean, we're gonna do it, um, and we'll give you our honest opinion. Maybe we'll make it taste good. But we're gonna try making jerky. We're gonna try doing it on the grill, though. I've never done it. When I used to make jerky with my dad growing up, we, that's pretty much what we did with all the birds that we got. He would stick it in the oven on low with the oven door cracked and dry it out, but he would have to cook them for like eight hours, it seemed like, overnight almost. But I think I can do it on the grill a little bit faster. So we're gonna try it. So let's uh, pick up the decoys. You guys enjoy the time lapse. Folks, welcome to the kitchen here. Um, actually, we've got a timer set. We have seven minutes to make this. So what we did was we cleaned the birds, didn't film it for obvious reasons. It's really easy to clean ducks. Google it if you need to. But we are going to be trying to make some duck jerky. So I've got a whole bunch of ingredients here. Um, everything from hot and spicy Worcestershire, uh, salt, garlic. What is this? Garlic, salt, onion powder, soy sauce, pepper, and then these two guys, these two gems right there ducks all meat seasoning and the brand new ducks wild game seasoning we literally designed this one right here for what we're doing today which is preparing wild game whether it's deer turkey that you go and harvest duck or anything like that we made this thing it smells phenomenal i just sit here by myself and just 
like Rackley likes to sniff fish. I sit here and sniff this wild game seasoning. It smells fire, it's like a smoky, spicy, it's fantastic. But this is what I'm gonna be using. So I have not actually done this before, I'll be honest with you. I used to make jerky all the time with my dad, but he was the one that made the marinade. And I remember he, he did like the, those little kits. Like you can buy like goose jerky making kits um, and it comes with all sorts of seasonings. And then he did like liquid smoke and stuff like that. But I didn't wanna go to the store. I was like, you know what? We're just gonna wing it. So we got some hot and spicy marinade. This is just, I mean, anytime you're dealing with duck, the hot, not the hotter, but like the more flavor, the spice you put into it, the better. This smells pretty good. So, you know, we're just gonna give it, we're just gonna give it one of these. I'm not really sure how much of what we're gonna be dealing with, but then we got some Worcestershire. This is gonna add some really nice flavors to it. And then we've got some garlic salt just to go a little bit. This, this has a little bit of garlic in it, but this will make it go a little bit heavier. So throw a little bit of that in there. And you've got some onion powder, throw a little bit of that in there. And I might have to like keep adding because this is not really that much liquid. We got soy sauce. Everybody loves soy sauce. I don't have any teriyaki. So we're rocking with the soy sauce. Close enough. Then you've got just regular pepper just to keep the, the spice level a little bit intense here like that. Yeah. A little pepper action. And then this is the all meat seasoning. Oh, this is a fresh one. Ooh, we're getting it fresh boys. Let's go ahead and just give it a healthy dosing like that. Oh yeah. We'll throw a little bit of this in there. This, this is where I'm going to garnish it on top. So once you lay it on the grill, you go over and you put this on top of it. That's gonna get some really nice flavors actually on the meat itself instead of just soaking it in. So, but we'll add a little bit of this into the mix just like that. I think that's pretty, looks pretty good. I don't know if it's enough liquid. We have a, I mean, it's not an insane amount of meat. Six birds, but we'll go ahead and just keep adding some of this. Like I said, th these aren't, you know, we're just gonna give her help. These aren't uh, precise measurements by any means. We're just, we're gonna make something that's spicy, flavorful. I'm assuming that it's not gonna make the duck taste any worse than duck normally tastes like. So, so we're just gonna go ahead and keep adding it until I feel like we got enough liquid on here. And then what we did was we, we I didn't finish my statement. We cleaned the birds, we washed off the breasts, we threw them in the freezer for 30 minutes. We have like five more minutes. That'll help firm them up and then you can slice them nice and thin and it'll be really easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and just, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna call it good there. Give the old whiskey. And right there is your marinade. So. Five minutes, we're gonna grab the breasts out, slice them, throw them in the marinade, and then we're gonna cover them, put them in the fridge, anywhere from like three hours minimum up until 24 hours. The longer, obviously, the better. I want to eat the jerky today, so we're probably gonna lean towards more of that just two, three hour mark, and then throw them on the grill for another two to three hours, and we'll see how it turns out. You guys stay tuned. Boom! Look at that. That's that is, that is the harvest from today. So, we got the gaddies, we got the spoonies, and then these are all of the tilio. So I would like to keep these, um, the spoonies separate just to, uh, well, that way I don't eat it. If I, if it ends up tasting bad, I don't, I want to make sure it's separate. So that way I don't like give it to somebody, hey, try this awesome duck jerky I made and it tastes like booty. So we'll put it in a separate bowl. So we'll save those for last. So, I mean, they're a little bit more firm. They honestly probably could go for another 30 minutes. They're really honestly just more cold than anything, but people like their jerky different thicknesses. That's not a piece, but what what I'll probably do is run it probably this way, right? That'd probably make the most sense. So if you go like this, your thickness is gonna be based off how far you go this way. So, I mean, I don't mind a little thick jerky. So if you did like, what do you think about that? You think that's a solid piece? Seems kind of small, doesn't it? Thinness wise? Cause you can only go thick. You can't go yeah, longer, right? Like, yes, that's true. like if I go like, oh, I feel like that's money. Cause it's gonna, sh it's gonna shrink a little bit, right? Yeah, true. You don't want it to be like, like crunchy like a potato chip. But you, you also don't- You don't like chips? I, I mean, I like chips, but in this case, it's not really my goal here. So, I mean, like, that's a thick, that's a thick boy. That, that is that a- That kind of thick, yeah. That's a thick boy right there. Oh, there's my alarm to take him out of the freezer even though I already did. So, all right, we're gonna make them a few different, uh, do you think I should try to splice that guy in half or do we try a couple big ones? They just, they'll just take longer. They'll yeah. taste fine, they'll just take longer. Should we just leave it, try a couple big ones? Cause I mean, realistically, these are gonna be th all thin. So maybe we leave a couple big chungus ones in case like that's the strat. So I'll just cut this guy in half. Okay, so the gaddies, we're going, we're going thick boy on it, but I think that's okay. So. Once you've got them cut, what you're gonna wanna do, throw the meat in a bowl, and then you basically are gonna pour the marinade in it like that. So we're gonna repeat that process. Go ahead and get these all sliced and diced up, put in there, cover them up, put them in the fridge for a few hours, and then we'll put them on the grill. So you guys stay tuned.
Welcome back, folks. It is the next day. We changed our mind a little bit. We planned on just marinating it for a couple hours, throwing it on, and then I was like, dude, let's do this the right way. Let's not be lazy. Let's not just try to wrap this video up. Let's make it the right way. So here we go. After 24 hours of pure marination, this is what we're dealing with. The uh, the ones that are running horizontal over here, like all these guys, that is the Spoonie. The rest is between Teal and Gaddy. But I mean, like, we got some chunky pieces right there. So I wanted to make sure that we marinated it long enough. If you're gonna make some super thin slices and kind of make it like a potato chip type deal, you probably don't need to marinate it that long and you probably also don't need to cook it that long. But what we're doing is we marinate for 24 hours. I've got some pepper and wild game seasoning. I kind of want to mix it up a little bit because I don't, I've never done this before. So I don't know if my marinade concoction was too strong or not enough. So I'm going to season some of it with wild game on top, some of it with pepper, and then maybe a couple pieces with just nothing. Just to see like maybe my marination was way too strong and uh, basically like I, I need to like just tone it down a little bit. So I'm trying to kind of dial in the recipe today so that way in future catch cooks we kind of know what's going on. But here we go. That is the duck right here. It is quite so windy out here. I might have to go season these guys inside. My freaking seasoning is going to get blown around everywhere. But we've got the uh, got the old Traeger cooked up to supposed to be about 180. If it's going to work, I mean, I looked a bunch of recipes. Everyone said 180. So that's kind of what the plan is. It is kind of windy, so I don't know if it's going to keep temp. But we're thinking cooking this thing between four and eight hours. I mean, it might take all day long with these big chunky pieces. So it's really just going to depend. But let's just go ahead and get me some of this wild game seasoning on top. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. This wind is not really helping me right now. We'll just call it good with that. There you go. Good enough for me. Um, these pieces I will leave bare, these bottom ones since the wind's blowing. And then let's do some pepper for this guy. Boom, good enough. We got pepper jerky, wild game seasoning, and then a, like I said, a couple bear guys that I'll set off to the side in case my marinade's super strong and I want a couple mild pieces or whatever it might be. So peppered, wild game. We're gonna see which one we like best. Let's go ahead and load up on the grill and show you what it looks like when we're done. Shoo, look at that guy right there. So this is the Spoonie. I end up putting wild game seasoning and pepper on half of them and just pepper on some of them. These are more of my plain ones, not much seasoning. It looks like most of that is teal. So teal tastes pretty good and as is. So like I said, those might be really good mild pieces um, if somebody doesn't like spice. Then we've got peppered here, wild game, more peppered and wild game uh, kind of mixed in there. So we're gonna give it a shot here, folks. I'm gonna shut the lid here, uh, let it get heated back up since I've had it open for so long. And honestly, I'll probably see you guys in a few hours. I'm gonna check on it every hour um, for probably pretty much the rest of the day until we get some good delicious duck meat duck jerky in our mouth so stay tuned Shee, look at those babies Yew. well folks surprisingly they are done way faster than i thought everything i read online was like four five six seven eight hours we've been in for two and even the thick pieces i took i did take a bite i'm not gonna lie i took a bite right here look at that it's soft it's moist it's not see that it's not really hard it's not super tough it's, it's like eating a piece of steak Dude, this is insane. You would never know this is duck. Pooja is gonna freak out. Pooja's not here, he'll be here later this afternoon. I'm gonna go ahead and take all this off the grill though and um, set out and let it cool off, dude. Oh my, you guys, this is how I'm cooking every duck I kill for the rest of the year. This is, I bet I could give this to Macy and she would think it's good. Will she eat it knowing it's duck? Probably not, but I'm gonna try to convince her because I am convinced she would like it. That, you you cannot tell, in the flavors there, it's not too strong. That wild game seasoning is insane. I wish I, I wish there was like smell-a-vision or taste-a-vision, like where you guys could take, this is insane. This is absolutely insane, I cannot believe the taste of this. Well, wow, I am impressed, I'm not even gonna lie, I am super impressed right now. That taste is, I'm, I'm gonna go for more of the unseasoned. Okay, it's not bad. You don't you don't get that real just punch of flavor from that wild game seasoning. But it is still really good. It still tastes like really good beef jerky. If you want it a little bit spicier, not spicy, but more flavorful, definitely put that wild game seasoning on. But that is also really good. So wow, she's giving hell right now. I'm gonna get I'm gonna go ahead and take all this off. Set down. That is the spoonie. I'm gonna set that off to the side. That is the true test. If the duck's wild game seasoning and the other concoctions I put together can make spoonies taste good, I think we got her figured out, boys. I think we got the recipe for wild game figured out. Jerky. So let's go 
Let's get him taken off, and I'll see you guys when pool day gets here. I don't trust you right now. Shoo. Shoo. What do you think? Do you think um, it's going to be good or not? They look good. I'll give you that. The, the presentation not, points? Presentations on, yeah. You get, you get presentation points. So I've tried it, as you guys saw, but Pool Jet has not. So we've got three, well, I mean, two, but one of them is the Spoonie. So I don't want to try the Spoonie. I haven't tried the Spoonie, I'll be honest. Oh, okay. I haven't tried the Spoonie. So we'll, we'll, we'll wait on We'll that. wait on that. Yeah. So do you want to try? I would. Which one I, did you like better? I'll ask that. Honestly, I don't. Can you answer that? You want me to wait? No, wait. I okay. would say you should try that one this, first. There's your pepper Because that's right? going to give the... you a lot, a little bit more spice. Yes. Okay. So if I was you, go for it. Yep, that's fine. Perfect. <laughs> I was just, I don't know. Okay, so what do you think about the texture? I thought it was going to be way more crispy. Yeah. Like the look of it, I yeah. thought it was going to be a lot harder. Gosh, it's it's, pretty, it's pretty tender. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty good. You like it? Not bad. Would you prefer that over like Jack Links? Or do you I like mean, Jack I wouldn't Link? get carried away with it. Oh, uh, gee, see, it, I, it, I, I would. Hey, it's close. It's close. It's close. I'll give you I, The thing is, I like the texture of that better than, in my opinion, than like Jack the Links. The aftertaste is very smoky. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you get any of that or no? Yeah, I mean, I haven't honestly had a piece for a couple hours. So, fun fact, I only put these on the grill for two hours. Really? Two. So, I, I guess the longer, the crispier it would have gotten. They were better fresh out. Okay. They're not bad. No. They're drier now than they before. It was like taking like, a piece of like steak. It oh, was really, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like real juicy. Mm -hmm. So now I'm getting crazy. I'm going big daddy here. Ooh, so that's gonna be the Milardo. That's that's big papa, dude. Really? Yeet. Look at that. Oh, you're really zooming in, huh? Oh yeah. What's the texture like? That actually doesn't look too bad. I was worried they're gonna be dried out. It's drier than the smaller piece. Really? Which I feel like is kind of backwards, right? Yeah, I, well, I feel like I gotta try this now. Yeah. It may just be because it's a different type of bird. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Because I assume what I ate here was probably the teal. Yeah, you probably ate a piece of teal, yeah. more than likely. Yeah. And that would be mallard. Yeah. But could you tell that that's duck, though? Like, no. do you get it? I don't get a gamey taste at all. Not at all. No. no. Which one Not would one you bit. prefer, pepper or wild game? I think the wild game one. I, I, yeah. I agree too. If you're a big that, fan of a good peppered beef jerky, Obviously, pepper is your deal, but like the smoky flavor from the wild game seasoning really gets you good with mm -hmm. that one. I think yeah. if I was going to redo it, I'd probably go straight wild game, no oh, yeah. cracked pepper. I think yeah. you get better flavor. So Wait, now comes the real question. Oh, God. If we can make that taste good, I would say my soy sauce, Worcestershire. Whatever wor that combo was. I didn't measure anything. Combination worked <laughs> because this duck pretty much is the worst tasting duck. Like it cooked probably a little bit worse. So, all right, I'm going to go in. Just silent chewing. I mean, it's not that bad. No, I don't think. See, I, that could be worse. Do you get a ducky taste though? No, not at all. I think that one. It's different though. I'm trying to think of how. How is it different? This one tastes more like legit beef jerk. Mm -hmm. It doesn't taste. They got like a whole different taste. Yeah, this one's more dry though. Yeah, definitely. So I only did two hours, but the thing is, I left my house for two hours and I came back. So I could have taken them out soon. Like I, I only checked on them once after mm -hmm. two hours because we were supposed to do four hours. What happened there? Ooh, I don't know. That don't taste good. Really? I ate something on this one. It wasn't good. What did it taste like? It tastes like ass. I don't know. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, yeah. I would say though, if you shot a spoonie, this would be the way to prepare it. Yeah. So you, it just, just doesn't taste mm -hmm. good? This other piece I have is better. Really? Now I feel like I got to like go eat another piece and like make it. You want to eat the backside of this guy? Yeah. Would it, you can't describe the taste at all or? No, I don't really know what that tastes like. It kind of tastes like dirt. Really? Yeah. That piece I could probably tell is a little bit more ducky. Yeah, that piece. I don't even know if that's ducky or I don't know what that. Is. It, you're, the the, the spoonie's not as good as the mallard or the it. So it's a little bit drier, which I don't think has to do with the bird. But you don't get the ducky taste. So if you do shoot spoonies or you're not a fan of the taste of duck, this in my opinion would be the number one way to mask it. Oh yeah. Like 100%. 100%. Mm -hmm. You couldn't tell. I could give this to anybody, and the last thing they would think of would be duck. So oh, yeah. that's pretty much all we've got. The verdict is: you like duck jerky? That's pretty good. I like duck jerky too. I think we could definitely. Mess with the. That one's the best. The, yeah, the I was gonna say. The wild game one's the best. That's. Yeah. We gotta save some for banjo. Mm -hmm. The wild game one, I would actually like put in a Ziploc, save it, and like mm -hmm. eat it frequently yeah. type thing. The others, the pepper's not bad, but the wild game one definitely is the best. So, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Everything you guys saw here from the seasoning to the duck call to the hats, the t shirts, the hoodies, everything we were wearing while we were hunting and everything that we used. Not everything. I don't sell Worcestershire sauce, but the seasoning yeah. that we use, we should. Maybe go ducks Worcestershire sauce. You get banjo on that. We could, all of business banjo figure out how to, how to get that one done. But if you guys want any of the seasoning or any of the other duck sparks, that will, will be linked down below, like I said earlier, and use promo code FLAIR to get 10% off your purchase. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Duck jerky, in my opinion, was a success. I'll catch you guys in the next one, and peace.